Well, hello again. Uh, this, uh, I, I'm very happy because uh, the organizing committee uh, really accepted four papers from my group for this conference. But uh, only me and my colleague uh, who is sitting there, we were the only ones that could do the, the travel because of uh, some uh, bureaucracy restrictions. So this is the second paper that we brought to this conference. And um, uh, with the exception of the last uh, paper that uh, Diego is going to present tomorrow, these three papers I am uh, presenting could be named uh, Fractional Mechanics in the Real World or something like the uh, uh, practical use of the, all these uh, theory that you, people like you or like most of the people in this room develop and, uh, uh, and we are very happy uh, to do that kind of work. So we, in all countries like Mexico, we are able to apply and to improve uh, our economy, or industry, or, or industry, or economy, and also our, uh, our level of life. And I, I explain why. Uh, again, uh, Mexico is uh, uh, it's depending largely on uh, its oil production and refining. Uh, up to 2014, our economy was 50% based on oil production and refining. Now it's around 30%, uh, or maybe less, because of the uh, drop of the oil prices. But anyway, this, uh, this work was done when the price of the barrel was uh, a little close to $100. So losing a day of production means a lot to uh, a country like Mexico. Uh, in one refinery, uh, they have this uh, called XCC process, which is a fluid, uh, it's FCC, fluid catalytic converter process. So they have this huge, uh, uh, furnaces uh, or reactors, but these are uh, in reality it's like a furnace. So the the vaporized uh, hydrocarbon or oil comes from the top, and then uh, uh, somewhere right below here uh, there is a powder uh, uh, catalyst that is uh, injected with a uh, hot air, very hot air. Uh, maybe 800 degrees uh, Celsius and it forms a fluid bed or, 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 and so the catalyst is able to break the uh, large oil molecules to make uh, light, lighter hydrocarbons and then produce gasoline or diesel. Uh, well, the problem with this uh, 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 and then the used uh, uh, catalyst, it, it becomes wet with the oil. So it has to be uh, poured into a uh, so-called catalytic reformer. So what the catalytic reformer does is literally burn the, the tiny oil layer that is uh, uh, on, on, on the uh, catalyst, catalyst uh, grains. So the, the process produces a lot of heat and these uh, reactors are, uh, they have a <coughs> lining made of uh, refractory ceramic. Well, what happened is that that refractory ceramic just fell off. It, it just spilled like, I'm going to fall off. Then the temperature uh, rose to uh, uh, above uh, 550 degrees centigrade with the spots up to 600 degrees centigrade according to the uh, thermographic recordings. Um, well, there isn't any person here, but 
person standing here should be maybe this height. So you can imagine the size of this uh, uh, equipment. Well, the basic story goes like this. Uh, they realize the, uh, that the refractory landing had fallen off because the wall, uh, this, this uh, piece of metal became uh, red hot. So they, they, uh, they realized that something was wrong inside of the converter, but they couldn't shut down the plant. Because they shut down the plant, uh, first this equipment takes like uh, three days to cool down. After the cooling down, it has to be uh, energized, that means they, 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 uh, they inject the vapor or steam to remove all the, the uh, explosive uh, hot hydrocarbon. Then people can get uh, in through these, these uh, openings and change the refractory. So that entire process takes like 45 days, working 24 hours a day. So what the uh, refinery management asked us to, to do was to give them an operating window so uh, they could operate the reactor without any preparation, just doing anything but letting, uh, let, uh, letting the reactor work without the internal refractory, and wait to the very last minute so they could shut down the plant, stop producing about uh, 100,000 barrels a day of gasoline, and then they could uh, do the repair. So this is this is this work. I think it, it, it's more interesting the story behind than what we did next. So what we did was, uh, well, uh, the, uh, the 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 damaged section immediately went uh, into a creep regime, so we could see the uh, creep deformation of the of the shell. The shell is made of. Uh, Low alloy, uh, uh, it's a heat resistant uh, steel. Um, it's basically uh, two and a half chromium, one molybdenum uh, steel alloy. Uh, so it went into a creep deformation. I, I think it, it's very important to say that the weight that this uh, section is carrying is over 300 metric tons. It's very, very heavy. Uh, piece of equipment. So by the time we, uh, we were able to, to get into the equipment and measure the, uh, the deformation, uh, it had a bulging of uh, 30 millimeters tape. You can see this, this is a, a roller, a straight roller. So you can see the, uh, the bulging deformation. And this bulging deformation is not symmetrical, so it caused the, the uh, the reactor to tilt. The tolerance of the uh, out of plumbness of this uh, piece of equipment is one millimeter every hundred uh, feet. A hundred feet is like 30 something meters. So this was already uh, out of uh, uh, our specification. Oops. Uh, we were we we managed ourselves. That was very difficult, but we managed ourselves to perform a field methodography uh, with the surface at 500 degrees C. Okay, so the metallurgists in this room will understand to me that taking this methodography from the in-service reactor was heroic. Because the surface was at uh, 550 degrees centigrade. Uh, so we have to adapt uh, field. Uh, we couldn't use plastic replicas because the plastic would, would be simply burned. So we use a field me uh, mechanical metalloscope, and and we have to build uh, a water cooling jacket 
So the, 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 uh, this is not etched, by the way. The, uh, the gray boundaries that you can that you, that you see here are naturally etched by the heat, by the oscillation. And these are the uh, the creep, uh, the intergranular creep points that you, know, you don't need to etch them. Like, you just see them. Uh, so we were able to to uh, to put the uh, field metatoscope in the hard surface, take picture, uh, and all, of course the, all the grinding was mechanical. Uh, so we could be sure that the uh, this uh, piece of metal was in great conditions and was about to fail. So, uh, well, we use the. Uh, uh, the design and construction data of the vessel. Uh, see the, uh, uh, it, the the vessel is basically a uh, 516 great cemetery steel, uh, about 70.2 meters diameter, one inch uh, thickness of 25.4 millimeters, and this is the head of the of the ring that was overheated. Uh, Pressure is not very high. Uh, uh, design operation temperature is 722 centigrade. Uh, the maximum, at maximum, allowable external temperature is 343 degrees. But as I mentioned before, uh, the the operating temperature uh, or the overheating temperature was uh, 450 and up to 600 uh, degrees centigrade. Um, so we use the uh, the Lamson Miller parameter in order to assess the operating window until the refinery how long could they operate the uh, the, the reactor in the creep regime. Uh, so the result was uh, yeah. Um, Okay, good. Uh, I think I moved something here, but uh, no, yeah. Okay, so by using the, the uh, Larson Miller parameters, we calculated a uh, uh, rough short time. This is not the, yeah, it's not a, a remaining life. The remaining life calculation always comes with a safe, safety factor. This is without safety factor. This is rupture time. So we calculated uh, 750 hours and 14 minutes. Uh, so we told the refinery. This is a, a little less than 30 days. But they operate the equipment a little more than 30 days. Uh, but uh, what they do is uh, they carefully control the operating temperature of the reactor. These, these reactors uh, overheat very easily, so they did the, they did the job. Uh, they control the operating conditions to avoid, avoid any overheating. Uh, the, the, the equipment has a fair external thermal insulation, so they remove the, the external uh, thermal insulation and they put fans to pull down the surface and maintain the, the damaged uh, ring uh, as cool as possible. Uh, so finally the, the overheated ring was uh, actually creep, but it endured the 30 days that the refinery asked us because within those 30 days they would be able to shut down the plant because they had a program and a schedule uh, maintenance program, so they could shut down the, the refinery without uh, um, any uh, losses in the production. Uh, then, uh, after shutting down the, the reactor, uh, they they called a. a a maintenance company and ask them how long would it take to replace the damaged ring 
which uh, I remind you is like three meters high and about eight meters diameter. And the construction, the maintenance company said, ah, oh, yeah, 60 days. So the refinery couldn't afford a 60 day shutdown to replace the damaged part. So they came back to us and said, well, what can be done? And we said, well, this, this wheel, uh, from the structural point of view, is, is, is like, a, like, a, like it, it's a support. Yeah. It's like the, uh, the support skirt that I uh, showed yesterday in, in, in my lecture uh, yesterday. So we designed a reinforcement uh, based on the uh, API. Uh, uh, this, this, this is bull, but it's not the uh, it's not the animal. This is a bulletin. It's a short name for bulletin. So the API bulletin to you uh, sounds like a lyrics of a song. Bull to you, uh, but anyway. Well, it gives you the guidelines to design uh, reinforcement uh, for a, for a for a cylinder that is under uh, compression load and some additional loads. So if we follow the recipe and calculate the uh, the stiffening ring, uh, we didn't have time to perform any pneumatic simulation or uh, any detailed calculation. So what we did was to take the uh, some, uh, it, it's a design principle called the uh, uh, maxim, maximum uh, possible load, which is sort of a summatory of the dead loads plus the light loads. So the, this uh, gave us uh, 500 metric, metric tons. The real way that this piece of uh, of the reactor is, is, uh, is supporting is about 300 tons. But with these additional considerations, we designed the reinforcement for 500 metric tons. Uh, we did all the. Uh, uh, when you do these kind of reinforcements, you not, not only have to do the design according to the, the force that I have to support, but you also have to verify that this uh, system doesn't. Uh, it doesn't become mechanically unstable. It, it doesn't bend, you know, because it, if it bends, the uh, moment of inertia drops down and then the whole thing will fall down. And we didn't want a 300 ton uh, reactor with 700 tons of hydrocarbon just to fall off, you know. So we did all the checkings, and finally, uh, here within this uh, red uh, rectangle, you see some uh, these ribs here are the uh, reinforcement. They were built, yeah, they, they were uh, fabricated in about three days. Took like four days to weld. So in uh, a little more than one week, we had the, the section reinforced. Then they painted, painted very nicely. And finally, uh, this reactor, the, the, of this work was done in 2010. Uh, I, I, I took this picture last, uh, uh, in 2016. So this has been working seven years. Now it would be almost uh, Oh, sorry, six years when I took this picture. Nowadays, we've been close to seven years, no reported failures. So this is a demonstration that these equations work and they can provide solutions for the real world. So, thank you very much.